Okay, so we've spoken about two amplifiers so far, and you are probably quite rightly thinking they're not going to stop at two amplifiers. Why would you do that? Um, and you're quite right, we haven't stopped at two amplifiers. So Delta will develop into um, a range of products. All of the models will be Class D amplifiers. And there will be a mix of non-DSP and DSP models. And we're going to introduce six of those models to you today. So, let's take a look. <coughs> so the Delta 40, which will be the smallest model in the range, will be available um, in <coughs> June. This is the lowest power model in the range and kind of equates to a similar power range to the current E475, except it's class D and the 475 is class AB. But other than that, it will be very similar. We've talked quite a lot so far about the Delta 80. <coughs> this will be available to ship at the end of this month. Um, so we'll be talking in the second half about um, how many orders you're going to give us over the next few days. <laughs> and also the Delta 80 will be available at the same time. So, hi guys. Grab a seat. Um, yeah, so the two Delta 80 products will be available uh, around the end of this month. <coughs> then we have the Delta 100 which is the second DSP model in the range and that will equate roughly to where the E100 currently sits as far as power so it's slightly more powerful than the 80 models and then there will also be a slave version of the 100 and then last but by no means least the Delta 120 will be the only uh, two channel amplifier in the range um, and that will be available in around May. So we should be taking orders for the 100 and the 120 um, at Frankfurt from you. Okay, so by the time we get to uh, June, you should have access to the complete range of Delta products. So power-wise, this is roughly how they're going to be split up. So the Delta 40, very similar to the power output of the E475, slightly more. The 80 and the 80 DSP, um, as Rob mentioned earlier, they're based on the uh, E60, but as you can see, they're slightly more powerful again, with the E60 being around 1500 watts per channel at four ohms. And then the Delta 100, again, slightly more powerful than the E100 equivalent. So there's a little bit more power available um, from each of the models. And then the Delta 120 uh, is roughly equivalent to an E90 in the current E-series range. Okay, so not a huge difference from the E-series that you currently know. So there's not a lot of more in extra information that you need to remember as far as the power outputs are concerned. So now we know there's going to be a range of amplifiers. Let's revisit some of those examples that we looked at. So we're going to run this as a three-way stereo system. So bi-amp tops and subs with one Delta 80 and a Delta 100. To run the subs. You could choose to run that uh, as a bridged amplifier or as four independent channels if you, if you wish. So again, they could be connected via Analog or Dante. The Delta 8 is powering the HF and LF of the biamp top boxes and then the Delta 100 is powering the subs. Now, in this example, we're using um, the four 
uh, processing channels of the Delta 80 internally for the HF and LF of the top boxes. But if we only use two of the auxiliary outputs for sub left and right, that means we've got two more auxiliary outputs, three and four available, that we could plug into another amplifier, let's say it's a Delta 40 in this case, which then gives us some extra processing outputs for some satellite speakers, for instance, or some front fills, however you want to use them. Going back to the, uh, the uh, kind of bar club installation example, we've got a Delta 100, which is running, again, the top boxes. That could be bi or passive, depending on how many uh, zones you want. And this time, we're taking auxiliary outputs 1 and 2 into a Delta 120 to power the subs. Again, in each zone, it's the same system. And then we've got uh, auxiliary outputs 3 and 4 available once again. Mm -hmm. So we could add a Delta 80, for instance, <coughs> to run some satellite systems for a VIP area, for instance. So you can start to build uh, complex systems very, very quickly and very easily. So again, with the stadium example, obviously here we can start building amp racks with um, a more focused um, power delivery for each band of audio. So obviously HF being potentially lower power and LF being higher power. So we can focus the power where we need it, and that means we, we're, not, um, we're not fixed to having DSP in every amplifier channel. We can put the money where we need it to be. So if we don't need too much DSP, we can keep the DSP amplifiers on the low side, but then we can use the more powerful amplifiers to focus the money and the budget where we need it to go. So it makes things a lot more flexible. So this is a slightly different application. So if we're looking at um, a system where somebody is designing uh, an installation, for instance, with a centralized uh, DSP, for instance, that could be um, QSC QSYS or a BIAMP system, something along those lines. If it's being used with the Dante network, then we can start to use Delta Slave amplifiers, mainly because we don't actually need DSP because all the DSP is already in that central processor. So most other manufacturers would force you to buy amplifiers with additional DSP because it's the only way that you can get Dante into the amplifier. With Delta we're not forcing you to do that. You can use Delta DSP amps if you need additional DSP at the end of the chain but you don't have to. If all the DSP is centralized then you can just buy slave amplifiers and just go Dante directly into the amps. So again, that saves a lot of money, not just with the product itself, but also in the infrastructure, um, because you're not needing to use additional analog infrastructure, which can be quite expensive. <coughs>